Thank you. <laughs> cool. Hey, um, quick show of hands. Who's ever bought an online course? Just quick show of hands. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, leave your hand up if you've bought an online course and not finished it. <laughs> oh wow. Okay, that's way above what I thought the numbers might be. So uh, that's interesting. All right, uh, so this presentation is all about online courses with WordPress. We've got a fair bit to get through today, so I'm gonna skip through at a fairly quick pace, if that's all right with you guys. I hope you've all had your coffee. Uh, for those that don't know, my name's Troy Dean. I'm co-founder of WP Elevation, which is a business coaching program for WordPress consultants and Rockstar Empires, where we teach creative entrepreneurs how to create and sell their own courses online. So I'm a big believer that WordPress is the platform that allows you to democratize education. It allows you to teach people all over the world and it allows people all over the world to learn from teachers all over the world and it really has flattened the education space. Uh, this is Megan Telpner who worked in advertising and then got really sick and was told by doctors that she had this certain condition that she was just going to have to live with for the rest of her life and she didn't accept that so she turned to nutrition and has now been living three years completely symptom free just by altering her diet. She then started teaching people in her loft, in her apartment in Canada, how to make beautiful, wholesome meals using all natural organic ingredients. And she was maxed out six nights a week teaching people in her kitchen. And she decided, I need to take this online and leverage it. And she has since taught over a thousand people through the Culinary Nutrition Academy and uh, generated over a million dollars in online revenue through teaching people how to cook meals. Pretty cool story, huh? This is Mark Brown, who's a self-published author. And Mark Brown kind of hacked Facebook ads to sell his books. And so now he teaches Facebook advertising to other self-published authors. Did a very a small launch to a very small email list and did over $250,000 in his first launch. And this is my favorite story. Nikki Elledge Brown is a park ranger who decided she didn't like doing park ranging anymore, but she had a knack for copywriting. So she put a course up online and went from zero to 300 grand revenue in her first 12 months teaching copywriting online. One of the most humbling experiences for me was going to New York City recently and hanging out with 32 of what we call our elevators, our WP Elevation members, in real life. And it was kind of weird because I know these people so well from their avatars and our members' website, and we got to meet each other in real life, and the catch cry of the day was, oh my God, we have legs! Because <laughs> we'd never seen each other's legs before. Uh, so that was a pretty uh, humbling experience. So the online education space is valued at 107 billion US dollars in 2015. And just to put that into some kind of perspective, the box office market was valued at $38.3 billion in the same year. So for every $1 people are spending going to the movies, they're spending almost $3 on online education. And the thing I like about online education is as a consultant, it allows you to go from that one-to-one -one relationship to a one-to-many relationship. It allows you to leverage your impact and leverage your revenue at the same time. It's also great for premium positioning. If you want to attract better quality clients, teaching an online course is a great way to instantly position you as an authority. So who can you teach? I think there are two types of uh, audiences you can teach. You can teach the DIY crowd. Ooh, fade. You can teach the DIY crowd. So that is someone who wants to know how you do what you do. So Coronda Adair, who's one of our members from Portland, Oregon. Does anyone here follow Coronda online? Oh, well, you should if you don't. Um, so Coronda's got a course where she teaches people how to build their own website on WordPress because if you, can't, if you don't have the budget to work with her, you can just do her course. And it's also a great way of qualifying leads and positions her as an authority. So that's the teaching the DIY crowd. The other audience you can teach are your peers, and this is generally the space that we play in. So WP Elevation, we teach WordPress consultants about running their business. And at Rockstar Empires, we teach creative entrepreneurs how to create and sell courses. I really like this space, the t teaching your peers. The problem with what's called massive online open courses is there was some research done thanks to Katie Jordan, who did uh, research across all these online courses across all the different platforms, Udemy, Coursera, um, Kajabi, uh, uh, Harvard, MIT, all these massive online education platforms. And the problem is that most online courses get student completion rates of somewhere between two and 10%. And if you just look around that room at the question I asked at the start of the talk, we're all in that boat. We've all bought courses that we've never finished, right? So we're consistently getting 65% plus completion rates in our courses. And this presentation, I'm gonna show you how we're doing it. So how do we do it? Well, first and foremost, we build everything on WordPress. 
Yay for WordPress, it's open source, it's completely flexible, it's extensible, it's customizable, you can pretty much do whatever you want. I'm gonna show you all the templates and themes and plugins and tools and bits and bobs and bells and whistles that we use to build websites that look like this at the end of the presentation, so hang around. I promise I'll satisfy that lizard brain at the end of this talk. And, but from a, a strategy point of view, we focus on more carrot and less stick. So we constantly are dangling carrots in front of our students to keep them engaged and motivated. Here are some ideas. Most online courses talk at you. So we've all signed in on an online course that kind of looks like this. It's a bunch of content and it's a one way conversation. Uh, here's another uh, example from, it's a great platform actually called Teachery, which I really like. They've got some video, they've got cool audio players, but again, there's no community here. There's no conversation, there's no classroom. They're just talking at you and giving you content. We invite you into a conversation. The first thing we do when you join one of our courses is we walk you through an onboarding wizard that asks you a series of questions so that we set your profile up. And it's important we do that so then we can match you up with accountability partners and get you settled in the community. We then, instead of throwing you onto a, a, a static page with a bunch of protected content, we put you into the wall and you can see straight away that we're asking you a question and inviting you into the conversation. And we say, hey Paul, what do you want to achieve today? And you can see our members here are leaving comments. This is what they're trying to get done today. This is what they're achieving today. So instantly, it's interactive and you're a part of it. We also then introduce you to your community. On that wall page, you'll see some, some indicators here that there are other people taking this course. I don't know about you, but I've bought plenty of courses online before and I've logged in and I'm like, I'm the only person here, aren't I? Yeah, like you sold one copy and I'm the sucker that bought it, right? <laughs> so we instantly give you social proof that you're a part of a classroom and part of a community. Most courses overwhelm you with content. This is actually a screenshot from an online course. Where do I start? It's like a vending machine. And hand on heart, I, I tell you, this is what our membership website looked like about 18 months ago until we, then we decided to completely restructure how we deliver our courses. We hold your hand every step of the way. So when you first log into one of our courses, you just see one thing. It's the course that you enrolled in. Yeah, and as you work through this course, which is drip fed one module per week at a time, as you work through the modules, we unlock bonuses for you. So every time you complete a module, we give you bonuses. And throughout the entire course, you end up with a dashboard full of bonuses. But you're not overwhelmed when you first log in because we just want you to focus on one thing at a time. Most online courses teach abstract concepts. I kid you not, this is a mind map from an online course. <laughs> what the hell? Like I'm all about originality and creativity, but come on, you know? We teach using very simple frameworks. So we show you step by step where you're at, what you need to do next. There's nothing abstract about what we teach. Most courses use long lessons, boring slides, and bullet points. Um, now, I've blurred some details out here to protect someone's reputation. This is an awesome course, by the way. I've done this course. Well, I haven't finished it yet, which is telling, but I've done it. And the content is amazing, but the learning experience is just horrible. Here's a slide from a video that goes for 17 minutes and 25 seconds. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of busy. I want to learn stuff quickly. I'm not going to look at that for 17 minutes and 25 seconds. That's why I haven't finished that course. We use slides and direct to camera for dynamic looking videos. So for example, our teaching environment where is Simon Kelly, by the way? Is he in the room? He is. Uh, our teaching environment, we think is beautiful. It's a very clean learning environment. We use slides with just one or two words on the slide, big bold fonts, beautiful color scheme, and we use direct-to-camera conversations. We use multiple camera angles, and we use really well-designed graphical elements to, to further explain what it is we're teaching. And we try and keep, this is one video. These are screenshots from one video. So we try and make them as dynamic and as entertaining and as engaging and as fun as possible. Most courses have little or no structure. So you don't know where you're at in the course, you don't know what you're supposed to do next, there's no indicator. We use psychological hooks to keep our students engaged. And let me give you one very practical example. In most of our lessons, we will use this psychological hook where we say why this is important right now. So for example, we've got a module on getting content from clients. Yeah, bit of a pain in the ass thing to do, get content from clients. So we've got this lesson on getting content from clients. And in that lesson, we might say something like, uh, welcome to module four, lesson three, whatever it is, getting content from your clients. 
It's really, in this lesson, you're going to learn how to get content from your clients in a timely fashion. And it's really important you pay attention to this right now because if you don't get content from clients up front, the project's gonna blow out, you're gonna be battling scope creep, it'll turn into a three month project and it will eat into your profit. So straight away, we hook the student in and we let them know it's important they pay attention to this now and turn off Facebook and turn off those videos on YouTube of cats water skiing. Pay attention to this right now. Most courses are also just video. So here's another screenshot of this fabulous course, which I, as I say again, great content, but all, all it is is a series of videos that pop up in a light box. Not a great learning experience, particularly if you don't like watching videos or you don't like the teacher's voice. Now I know I'm very fortunate because I have the world's greatest voice, so that doesn't really happen in our business, but sometimes you might not like the teacher's voice. I'm kidding, of course. So we've worked out over the last three or four years of doing this that there are four different learning modes. There's visual, there's oral, there's reading and writing, and there's kinesthetic, which is kind of, I'm visual and kinesthetic. So I like watching stuff and then doing stuff. That's what kinesthetic means. So we use video, audio, text, quizzes, and homework. What does that look like? So we use video with text underneath the video. You see this video here is nine minutes, 26 seconds long. That's one of our longer videos. Most of our videos are around the sort of five to eight minute mark. We use um, downloads underneath the video. We have audio and video downloads that people can download offline and listen to in transit. And we have quizzes, which reinforces what you've learned in the video. By the way, doesn't matter what niche you're in, doesn't matter what the subject is that you're teaching, you can apply this to, to any market. And I'll show you a couple of examples of this in a moment. And we use dynamic quizzes to keep students awake. Because if, if a quiz is just multiple choice, it's really easy just to like tick the radio buttons Get it wrong, go back, tick different radio buttons until you get it right. Everyone's done that before. So we use a combination of multiple choice. Uh, we use drag and drop uh, questions. So you have to drag and drop the answers into the right order. And again, this is just designed to keep the students awake and keep them entertained and engaged. And most courses deliver static content. So the whole learning environment is not dynamic in any way. It's just, it doesn't change. No matter where you are in the course, you don't know whether you've watched a video, you don't know if you've completed a module. And this is generally what a static content course looks like. List of content down the left hand side and training video on the right. And again, I have no idea which ones I've watched and which ones I haven't. So we use gamification to keep students motivated. Anyone here use Uber? Besides Sarah and I, who were out on the street last night trying to get an Uber, yeah? The thing I love about Uber is you book an Uber and you can see where the car, like Sarah opened her app last night, she goes, oh my God, there's Ubers everywhere. And it's like playing Pac-Man in the old days. It's like, I want to book a Pac-Man and get away from the monsters. And then you watch the Uber kind of on the map and, you, and you're like, oh yeah, the Uber's three minutes away. And in the meantime, the guy's beeping his horn in front of you going, hello. <laughs> so gamification invites you to be a part of the product. And uh, this is how we use some gamification. We've got some very simple progress meters underneath each video and down the right hand side that just let you know, okay, yep, I've worked my way through this. I don't have to go back and watch this unless I want to revisit it. We also have, um, a, some indicators on each course. So, okay, that course is completely done. It was seven weeks and eight lessons. The next course is two hours and 16 lessons. So we're constantly trying to make it more gamified, if you like. <laughs> this is something we've worked really hard on. Most courses email you when new content is released. Hey Paul, module two's just been released. Log in and check it out. Which is kind of cool, unless you haven't completed module one, or unless you didn't even know there was a module two coming. So what we do is we send you emails based on your actions and your behavior. And our emails look something like this. They say, hey Paul, congratulations on completing module one. We've just unlocked some bonuses for you on the dashboard to keep you busy over the next few days. Module two will be released in a few days. And you only get that email if you complete module one because there's no point sending you a congratulations email in seven days if you haven't completed it. So we try and use behavior based triggers to trigger our emails and our in-app messages are also based on your actions. Anyone familiar with intercom? Not the old walkie talkie kind of intercom thing, like the internet based intercom. So it kind of looks like this. This is a screenshot of intercom. And so again, because what we know, like most people don't read their emails, even if they've ponied up good money to be part of a course, they just don't read their freaking emails, right? I don't know what's going on, but they log into the members website. And so we put an in-app message saying, hey Paul, congratulations on completing module two. So we try and capture people's attention and hold their hand every step of the way, no matter what their preferences are. If they don't read emails, that's cool. We'll still get them in the in-app messages. And we reward you for taking action. Now, how do we reward you for taking action? Well, when you complete 
uh, a module will unlock a little badge and we'll put that badge on your dashboard. So what, what's a badge? Well, I promise you, the badges have been a huge game changer for us. People love a little badge or a little you know, emoji or something to kind of acknowledge that they've taken some action. When you've, and we also unlock bonus content. So the top right hand corner here is a coaching call or a new course that you can now access because you've completed a part of the course. You won't see that unless you've completed that part of the course. And when you finish the course, we allow you to download the actual course badge to say you've completed the course and a certificate. We're not a registered training organisation and we don't pretend to be. It's a bit of eye candy, it's a, a certificate of completion, it's an acknowledgement of the work that you've done. And one of the most rewarding parts when we have our intakes throughout the year is at the end of the six or seven week course, we get a whole bunch of photos in our Facebook group like this. This is Karonda Adair from the US, Renee Sedgling from the Netherlands, uh, Melanie Adcock from the US, Christina Hawkins from Texas, Ryan Lavander from the US, Julie Wolpers from the US, Dave Narav from Mumbai. And we have this map, this is another part of our gamification, where all the members can see where they are in the world. So you know straight away that you are not doing this course on your own and there's a bit of healthy competition because you don't want everyone else unlocking their certificate and you being left behind. Again, one of the most rewarding things about this for me, ironically being an online business, is actually hanging out with our customers in real life and, and having live events. Okay, so we have duplicated this exact process into our, our new project, which is called Rockstar Empires, where we actually teach people how to create and sell courses. So you'll see here the layout, uh, different branding, different um, color scheme and, and logos, but exactly the same platform, which I'm gonna walk you through in a moment. And we've also done this for our friend Nathan Chan at Founder Magazine. Anyone here subscribe to Founder Magazine or follow Nathan? Yeah, cool. So we built um, Founder Club for Nathan as well, built on exactly the same platform. All right, so you wanna see the technology involved? Yes, all right, here's the technology. So we start with Drupal, oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> we start with WordPress, of course, and then on top of WordPress, we install LearnDash. LearnDash is this amazing learning management system built by my good friend, Justin Ferryman out of Chicago. Uh, he's awesome, LearnDash is amazing and their support is incredible. This is what the LearnDash homepage looks like. And this is, this is what allows you to upload courses and content and quizzes and have uh, people unlock achievements as a result of going through those quizzes. Really powerful system. On top of that, we add BuddyPress, which is what gives us our social networking in our community. So if anyone's never used BuddyPress, in layman's terms, and I know uh, JJJ is probably gonna kill me for saying this, but it's kind of like Facebook inside WordPress. All right, sorry, there I said it. Um, BuddyPress looks like that. It's completely free, open source. Uh, you can grab that and install it. And then there's a few moving parts you need to tie them together, which I'll show you in a moment. But this is what allows you to see when your friends unlock badges and complete the course. So this is what brings the social element into the learning environment. We then use Badge OS, built by the amazing guys at Web Dev Studios, and this is what allows us to unlock badges based on when, when you complete a course. Um, then, by the way, these slides are available on uh, SlideShare. I'll give you the link at the end of this, so don't worry about frantically making notes. Uh, then, the thing that holds all of this together is a solution called Social Learner for LearnDash. This is built by a couple of guys, or a group of guys in Chicago called Buddy Boss. They basically build premium themes for Buddy Press and they're beautiful. And what this solution is, it's, it's not really a theme, it's a solution. It's a, it's a theme and a series of plugins that you combine to make the website look like the ones that I've been showing you. And this is what um, ties in the learning management system with the social uh, interactivity. Then we use Infusionsoft in the back end for our, all our email campaigns because we like spending lots of money for very confusing software. And Infusionsoft looks like that. It's really powerful, huge learning curve. It's very expensive, but it is very powerful and, and does a lot. We use Stripe to collect all of our payments. Stripe integrates with Infusionsoft uh, and is pretty cool. Um, and we use Memberium to connect WordPress to Infusionsoft. So the way this works is if you complete module one, Memberium then applies a tag to your record in Infusionsoft. That tag triggers an email from Infusionsoft to say, congratulations. Then when you refresh your dashboard, it all, Memberium says to WordPress, hey, they've now got that tag applied, unlock module two. So Memberium is the magic piece that really holds all this together. Uh, and that's what the Memberium um, website looks like. We also then use Intercom, as I mentioned, for our in-app messages, that's what the Intercom homepage looks like. We use Twilio to send SMS messages to our customers and our students to make sure they turn up to coaching calls and webinars on time. 
Uh, we use Vimeo Business to host all of our video hosting. It's a few moving parts here, isn't there? Yeah. Vimeo Business to host all of our, our, um, our videos. Vimeo Business is a new offering from Vimeo. It's about three months old. Gives you some really cool analytics on your videos. We use Amazon S3 to host most of our downloadable assets, templates and, and video and audio for download. And our whole website's built on an AWS stack as well. Don't ask me anything about that because I have no idea what you're talking about. Go and speak to my business partner, Brian, up the back. Or better still, hunt down Ben May on Twitter and ask him how to do it because he's the one that manages it for us. That's what the AWS homepage looks like. We use Slack for internal communications. How cool is Slack? Yeah. yeah? Slack is awesome. Uh, we use this, we found this great little tool to monitor our Facebook group, the engagement in our Facebook group. So we award points based on how engaged you are in the community. And we use this cool little tool called Gritix, which stands for Group Analytics. It's worth checking this out because it's built entirely on top of WordPress. So when you log into the Gritix dashboard, they've got a free account you can take for a spin. You go view the source code and you realize, oh man, this is a WordPress dashboard I'm looking at. But they've built this Facebook analytic, group analytics tool on top of it. And of course we use Asana to manage all of the moving parts. We have a team of 10 now, I think, plus six mentors, so there's like effectively 16 of us scattered across the globe, kind of managing the community here, building course content, running webinars, coaching calls, directing traffic in the Facebook groups and all that kind of stuff. So Asana is what we use to attempt to keep ourselves on track and make sure that nothing major falls through the cracks. So that in a nutshell is online courses with WordPress. So I'm now happy to answer any questions and after question time, I'll give you a link where you can go download my slides.